Hey there, everybody. Welcome back. You know what time it is. Time for another edition of Hail Yes, a Detroit Free Press podcast about University of Michigan athletics. Quickly, I'm Tony Garcia, Michigan writer for The Free, joined by our Big Ten insider, Reiner Saban, and producer, Andrew Burkle. And normally I like to introduce the boys and get some banter going, but just when we thought we had our show planned, we got some breaking news. Jim Harbaugh, former Michigan head football coach, has been suspended by the NCAA for one year and hit with a four-year show cause penalty for his, quote, unethical conduct and, quote, his failure to promote an atmosphere of compliance as it pertained to the investigation into impermissible recruiting uh, during a COVID-19 dead period in 2021. Now, fellas, we've had two of these investigations sort of overlapping, right? There's the COVID-19 dead period. There's the, I guess we'll call it Connor Stallions, recruit, uh, the sign stealing. So we'll call it recruiting by, is the first one. Sign stealing is the second one. We were, we were ready to talk about the second one, about sort of some of the implications for this year. A different, I mean, a, a draft notice of allegations about that just came out <laughs> a couple days ago. And we were ready to talk about it, what it means for Sharon Moore, X, Y, and Z. Here we are, Reiner. Uh, let's, let's get into Harbaugh first. One year. At least, I mean, should he have wanted to return? He can't for the next four years. Yeah, I mean, I, it's. Uh, I, I think it's sad, um, and um, in some ways, that this guy that supposedly and sadly ironic uh, that this guy who supposedly was all about the rules at one point and this university that held himself in this, you know, a, a, as a bastion of moral integrity now is forever linked to basically scandal and breaking the rules. And, uh, you know, it's just, uh, it was seen blatant in the way that he approached it. And, you know, the fact that he has been unapologetic and unremorseful about all of this is also, you know, quite uh, infuriating if you're uh, just a objective follower of college football in general. I mean, like, you know, where is the shame here? And it just never seems to uh, enter the mind of Jim Harbaugh that he did anything wrong or, you know, that anybody could accuse him of any kind of uh, wrongdoing and uh, uh, and be, you know, fair in doing so. And, I mean, his his response, his lawyer's response, Tom Mars, just, you know, totally ridiculous. Uh, clearly st- stuff went on here. And uh, as the NCAA laid out in the 48-page document uh, for this case, and then also in, you know, the the sign-stealing situation, there was something that went on there. And even if he didn't know what was going on, he should have known. And that's the whole thing. It's like, you know, when are you going to take responsibility and accountability? I mean, that is a um, – it's just a, a dereliction of duty, basically, is what – Jim Harbaugh uh, now stands for, in my opinion. Yeah, let me read a couple quotes from from the, this report uh, that, that just that just came out. So, uh, J- Jim Harbaugh was originally charged with a level two violation, right? Much like yeah. much like the re- the rest of uh, the staffers who who are involved in this uh, as well. And then, I mean, five staffers agreed to. Uh, terms with the NCAA and negotiate negotiated resolution, which is why Michigan football is on probation currently right now for exactly this three year probation uh, for 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 the yeah, for the next three years recruit uh, some some recruiting uh, limits and what have you not not a lot of specifications but but Jim Harbaugh was charged with a level one right because that's I mean that's it's it's a level above he was seem to have mislead investigators. That's the line that had been going around. Mm -hmm. Now, here's what came out in the report. Quote, during the investigation in this case, Harbaugh denied meeting with the two prospects. Initially, he told Michigan and the enforcement staff that he had no recollection of meeting either prospect or their fathers. In a subsequent interview, he went further, unequivocally disputing that either meeting happened. Excuse me, either meeting happened. Despite his denials, the weight of the factual information, including statements from the prospects, their fathers, and other football staff members, as well as documentation such as receipts and expense reports, demonstrates that Harbaugh was physically present and engaged in these meetings. 
So what that means, Harbaugh said something that he didn't think something happened. Then he said something didn't happen. Then there was proof that it did. So you can't get in the mind of someone else, right? You cannot say that he lied. But you can say that he misled them because there's evidence that's what they found. Um, let, let's bring in Andrew for his thoughts. Yeah. So just as far as I just wanted to insert here real quick to say, you know, from Tony, a lot of times we'll write the story and I'm there like, OK, reading through some of the the, the documents that have been far too many at this point that I, Tony and I said, we feel like we need uh, legal degrees at certain times. Um, it just seen up to this point with Harbaugh, it always had been Harbaugh misled investigators. Harbaugh uh, you know, very generic terms. We hadn't really learned anything today. So even if you are a Michigan fan uh, and you're wondering, okay, one year suspension, why why does this matter, right? Well, I mean, he's not coming back to college football anytime soon. Now we know specifically what he was, quote unquote, misleading investigators about. Uh, it was had to do with lying about uh, the the end the what's it called the the lunches or diner visits, and then it even mentions that these were uh, confirmed via expense reports. Uh, confirmed from third party reports. Uh, and the NCAA, you know, is very to the T on a lot of this legal stuff. And they seem to be very, 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 very certain that he was in fact there and said he wasn't there and changed his story multiple times. So that's kind of the crux of what the the meat of this sandwich that came out today. And the the next layer of meat, maybe the cheese of it, of this sandwich is is that it was a COVID-19 dead period, right? That's the, the that that's really the rub here that this was a time where no one was allowed to be speaking with recruit and and there's now evidence other witnesses the recruit their father people who were investigated by the ncaa at one point it said that jim harbaugh led them on a tour of of the of, of the facilities and it said that and and the question was who who said to do that and then the the this recruit's father said harbaugh did right so nobody is saying that this is like I, I don't know. Like they gave up the secrets to Area 51, right? Like this is not the this is not the end of the world. It Other has schools, nothing to do with cheeseburgers either. You know, really. I mean, that's just, that's the other thing. You know, it has nothing to do with that stuff. It's the it's the misleading, like you were saying, Tony. Yes, it, it was also meeting with people during a COVID nineteen dead period where you're not supposed to have contact. There was a health uh, uh, emergency. A uh, worldwide pandemic going on at that period of time. They were trying to be uh, cautious, as cautious as possible. Whether you agree with it or not, that was the end goal there. Uh, and Michigan seemed like they just didn't want to abide by those rules uh, based on uh, what was documented in this report. I mean, he even had uh, the former recruiting director uh, saying that it looked like they wanted to push, you know, he got a mandate from somewhere above that basically they were trying to push the boundaries as much as possible. Hey, I, you know? when I, the timing is, is at least curious because I, I, I sat down with Ward Manuel earlier this spring for, for sort of a lengthy interview, a uh, three-parter on com if you haven't seen it. And one of the questions was, was, was about that and sort of about that, that turning point in 2021 and why he decided to keep Jim. I wasn't even asking about the investigation. But one thing he said to me was that Jim Harbaugh came to him with a plan, a specific plan about a doubling down on recruiting, right? A reemphasis on on recruiting, on on on, st- on staffing, where they were going, and just he's and he said and, and and I mean they they switched defensive coordinators. There were there were wholesale changes. It was not just that. But the idea was that Harbaugh came to Ward with a plan about moving things forward. And then and then that's when everything started. Now, it does not necessarily mean one leads to the other, but there are a lot of leaps, conclusions. I don't even know if it's a leap. Maybe it's just a large step, right? Or just a normal step. They do one sort of does seem to to lead to the other. I'll graph to what his intentions when he said that they were going to try to beat Ohio State or die trying. All the evidence suggests that, that he, he was true to his word about that. Uh, they pretty much, you know, decided to, uh, you know, just from, you know, again, what, what the NTA does and, you know, obviously this the sign stealing uh, scandal kind of running uh, concurrently with their, you know, that period of time, 2021 to 2023. I mean, that was, you know, the period of time when 
the turnaround happened with Michigan. Uh, and right after, you know, that pandemic year, when they went two and four, that's when this stuff was happening uh, with the with the COVID-19 debt period um, uh, recruiting stuff. So, I mean, it was uh, it seemed like there was uh, some urgency there that may have not that it may have led them to kind of go down this path, which again has brought a lot of you know, shame, I think, to the University of Michigan and kind of has destroyed their whole persona as this, you know, do good, you know, do it right program. Well, it depends who you ask uh, about if the, if their reputation is is tar- is. I mean, you 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 wrote a piece about Jerome Moore. Uh, his reputation is tarnished before he's ever coached the first head, uh, his first game officially as a head coach. Yes, he's served in head coaching capacities, but not not officially. And after the break, maybe we'll we'll, we'll get in into that. But you're right. I mean, this is where I mean we were already talking before this just dropped an hour ago, and we had to reshape the show. We were talking about the idea of what of I mean, repeat effect about repeat offenders, right? And just the the school. Uh, I mean, just just the pattern of not non-compliance that that the that the NCAA has found. This is is why now we understand, or I don't know if understand is the right word. Now we see what the NCAA is saying. This is that is the pattern. This is the first part of that. Yeah, and uh, again, uh, people want to you know knock the NCAA, but the NCAA has rules, and the, you need to have rules uh, to have any kind of functioning, uh, you know. Uh, I guess entity or anything like that. I mean, you you can't just have no rules, and they they have, and if you have rules, they have to be enforced. And in this case, uh, the, the NCA is trying to enforce the rules, or at least encourage people to follow the rules. And the way that you encourage people to follow the rules is uh, to enforce them, and then if they're not being followed, to punish the people who are violating the rules. And in this case, it seems like the NCA is, you know doing what it needs to do to uh, uh, to keep things uh, a level playing field uh, in in college football. So what does it mean for you, Reiner? What does that, we'll, we'll get into this one. What does this, the, the show cause, Jim Harbaugh, these findings, what, what's your takeaway? Well, I mean, I don't know how much it affects Harbaugh, you know, again, if it, unless there's some punishment that, the NFL feels like uh, they need to uh, enforce themselves based off of what the NCAA has found. I mean, again, you know, there's a lot of talk of what happened to Jim Trestle when he, uh, you know, went uh, and joined the Colts after uh, I, I think he was barred from, uh, you know, a, a certain amount of games after the, after doing that. And so whether, they, you know, that could happen to Jim Harbaugh with the Chargers, Probably seems unlikely given that he's the head coach and Jim Tressel was just like nothing more than kind of a support staffer at that point. And so, uh, yeah, I think, uh, you yeah, know, he ends up probably, uh, you know, kind of getting away a little bit scot free in that sense, uh, with no real, uh, enforceable punishment. Uh, you know, the show cause has kind of been, you know, in name only and like, uh, um, you know, just for kind of appearance sake, uh, looks bad, but it does look bad for Jim Harbaugh because I think he staked his reputation to, again, being this guy who did it the right way, you know, for the longest time. And now he's probably most associated with this and, and, the uh, and the sign stealing situation. And I don't think he's ever going to be able to recover from that as far as his personal reputation. You know, he can live in his own fantasy world, but. You know, as as of now, I think you know most people probably view him as somebody who uh, did what it took, did you know, did what was necessary to win games and uh, get back to the NFL. And I don't think that's something that Jim Harbaugh probably deep down really likes. Yeah, but I, as in, I know you have seen it, and I don't know if everybody who is listening by now has seen the video uh, when Harbaugh was giving a press conference with the Chargers earlier this week, and uh, and was asked about after. The after the draft notice of allegations, there we go. <laughs> there are so many things I have to. I have to literally keep a track and file. Go back through the files in my mind. Like, what happened? Okay, after the draft notice of allegations for the sign stealing was served earlier this week, 
Harbaugh was asked about it, and there was not an ounce of contrition, right, at all. And I mean, I guess it's not for me to say that's good, bad, right, wrong, indifferent. That's how Jim Harbaugh felt. He felt that he did nothing wrong, and he did not. He had he had no knowledge of it, and therefore, right, not not on me. But he's saying that kind of about everything, right? Like, oh, I didn't remember about these recruits. Well, these expense reports and receipt kind of look like you were there. Um, it's like, oh, I didn't know about that. Well, maybe you didn't, but you are the head coach. And one of the findings uh, that, and the reason that uh, that Harbaugh was kind of hammered, not hammered here, but the reason that he, he's hit with, hit with a, a semi-stiff penalty is from this quote in the release. Quote, Head coaches are presumed responsible for violations that occur within their program. Due to Harbaugh's personal involvement in the violations and his failure to monitor his staff, he could not rebut the presumption, resulting in a violation of head coach responsibility rules. Essentially, sure. essentially, it, I mean, it's kind of what Bo, Bo Schembechler's quote in the in 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 his book about if you're I'm paraphrasing, but if you're in charge of any company and something bad happens below it, it's either because you enabled it or you were negligent. That's the idea. And Marbaugh saying he didn't enable it. So the NCAA is saying it was negligent. Well, I mean, yeah, and it's uh, it's just a bad look all around for uh, Harbaugh, University of Michigan. I mean, where's the compliance here? I mean, uh, and uh, why... Why was this allowed to happen? I guess, you know, these are the questions that keep ha- coming up, I think, all throughout Ward Manuel's tenure as AD. I mean, there's all these things that have happened, you know, whether it's, you know, questionable hires or, you know, uh, things that have gone on or multiple programs that are, uh, you know, unsavory. I mean, it's always uh, why did this happen or why was this allowed to happen? And so I think the same questions, you know, still exist now. And, you know, again, Jim Harbaugh doesn't have to answer for him, really. And he's kind of left Sharon Moore and War Manuel to kind of twisting in the wind in this case, uh, you know, to, you know, suffer the consequences. Uh, and really the, the brand of University of Michigan. I mean, you had this a guy who was like a star player, star quarterback. He was a star head coach. He was like all Michigan man. And yet he's the one who's kind of brought probably, you know, some of the greatest shame on the university sports programs uh, there is because again, you know, beyond Michigan and beyond Ann Arbor, there are a lot of people who don't, you know, consider the last year's national championship legitimate. You know, a lot of people find, you know, and you know, that's a real shame when you think about that quality of that team. That team was really, really good. And it's not compared to JJ McCarthy to Blake Corum to the, to the Joe Moore Ward line, right? Yeah. No, it's, so uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to step on your toes, Reiner. But you're no. Totally but the co- right. Yeah, and the coaches. The coaches are the ones that keep getting in trouble. They're the ones that you know are, have brought uh, a lot of these. Uh, um, you know. Uh, you know the situation. Uh, yeah, yeah. Brought the situation a lot of criticism uh, onto the program and uh, a negative light. And it's it's the um, it, it's unfortunate for again the people who. Are, are left behind the players and even some of the uh, assistant coaches and staff members who may be innocent in this situation. But like, again, uh, the program itself, I think has really taken a huge hit to its image. Yeah. We were in Oosterbahn today, which is actually the soccer facility uh, as the Towsley Museum, Schambeckler Hall and Al Glick Field House all continue their renovations. They're almost done. Uh, and we were asking players sort of about the same thing today. Uh, to, that you're alluding to and that we've been discussing. We will get to sort of what they had to say on the other side of this break. Don't go anywhere. This is Hail Yes. We're back. And Reiner, as we were saying before the break, speaking with the players today, and we were asking about the, among a number of things, right? This was not the only thing that was discussed. We were talking, I mean, we were hearing about Will Johnson doing Pilates at 6 a.m. We're talking to Josiah Stewart about sort of just, I mean, just specific things he he worked on, right? Just shedding blocks quicker, not just setting an edge, but so he can be more aggressive. I know this is really X and O's, but I just want to show there's details and things we write about on Freep.com that are 
kind of football footballsy, but this is the news of the day. And we were asking these players just about their sentiment. Uh, here we are again. It's August. And what we were asking them about this morning was the draft notice of allegations about the sign stealing. And has that been addressed with the team? And how, how, how do you all feel about that? Just what's what sort of the vibe? And I mean, whether it was Kalal Mullings, Tyler Morris, uh, I mean, especially Kalal, who, who's been around, right? Five years. And he's like, I mean, I mean, it was kind of like, like New Year, who dis, right? Or new, same song, same dance, whatever, whatever the phrase is. It's just, I mean, Groundhog's Day. Here we go again. He's like, it's always something. Uh, and, and he would, and this, I mean, this is not new for Michigan football players, which is kind of curious, right? Just, it's not something that you always want hanging over your head. Now, last year, it it galvanized, it worked, uh, but they were a very deep team. There was a very deep team. And they don't, they say they're not bothered, but you, and, and you got to take them at their word. But here we are again, asking them. These well, I don't know. But I mean, it, but some of their. Uh, I don't know. You want to take them at their word, right? Not you have to. You want to. Expressions kind of indicate they were a little bit annoyed by the whole situation because it does keep coming up and it keeps interfering and providing us some kind of distraction. Uh, and, you know, I, I do wonder, like, what it's going to ultimately have an impact on recruiting for, for Michigan going forward. I mean, like, uh, I mean, I'm sure there's probably some prospects that are like, hey, do I really want to go to the, a place that has this kind of reputation now? And their parents are probably are wondering whether they want to send their kids to a place like Michigan. Uh, Particularly when you think about the type of kids Michigan likes to recruit, right? Right. Yeah. And so, I mean, I, I, I think it's not good for Michigan, you know, to you know have this constantly in the news for the last basically you know, year and it's probably going to continue for at least another year. And so I, I think, uh, it, you know, that'll have a cumulative effect on, on Michigan. Uh, you may not see it in the immediate uh, time period, but it could have uh, a lasting effect uh, over the years. And it certainly doesn't help again with, you know, their opponents and whether they really care what their opponents think or, you know, opposing schools, probably not. But, you know, again, like, you know, at, at one point, uh, M- Michigan could stand on, and uh, you know, a pedestal and at least claim this idea that they, they tried to do things the right way. They, you know, did have this, uh, you know, great academic institution with sports and, you know, really uh, abided by the whole student athlete concept. And here you are, I mean, with this idea that, you know, now Michigan is kind of seen as this like, renegade almost like Oakland Raiders type program uh you know with with what's gone on in these last two NCAA investigations yeah and just to to bring this back uh for, for the details on on the draft notice of allegations <laughs> what the show was going to be centered around before we got the breaking news about 20 minutes ago uh, it was that head coach Sharon Moore was one of seven members from the 23 football program accused of violating NCAA rules uh, he too could face a show cause penalty, right? And technically, possibly a suspension um, after he allegedly deleted a thread of 52 text messages between him and Connor Stallions. Now, those in the know, uh, and I spoke to to people in the department, and this seems to check out. Uh, it's a, they these were not nefarious text messages in nature. Uh, however, that doesn't mean that evidence wasn't deleted, and then ha- and then later retrieved via dim- digital imaging and then Sharon uh, sort of sort of gave it up. So that's how how that played out. But then you got these other staffers. Uh, I mean, Jim Harbaugh, again, he's charged with a level one violation for this, right? The, the level one violation we're talking that we've been talking about the last 20 minutes has nothing to do with this now level one violation uh, for for the, the sign stealing investigation. Uh, that also includes Chris Partridge. Uh, former recruiting staffer Denard Robinson, if you talk about another very prominent name in, in Michigan football circles. Uh, and then, of course, Connor Stallions, uh, who are all accused of committing level one violations, which is the most serious category as we've gone over in the NCAA's enforcement process. Now, with this, the school also faces a level one violation charge, according to the draft, because of its, quote, pattern of non-compliance within the football program. That's kind of what we're getting at, right? It's that this is not just one off. It's 
the stories seem to be changing over here, then they're changing over there. And uh, it's a pattern of rule breaking on multiple fronts. You've got sign stealing, you've got recruiting, you've got uh, using coaches uh, when they shouldn't be uh, coaching, which was the analyst. That's that rule has since changed where now you can, analysts can now be coaching, but what at the time it wasn't. And so you've got a multiple different. Again, I, and I just want everybody to know, I don't, I'm not outing you, Reiner. Reiner is almost literally the reason responsible for this NCA, for this rule change, just for the record, <laughs> because it was kind of Reiner kind of uncovered that analysts were serving in unofficial capacities. Right? Am, am I taking that out of, out of bounds? Well, I mean, I, 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 I mean, basically Taylor Upshaw was the one who revealed that Ryan Osborne was doing, but then, you know, it was just one person and it just showed that there was, I mean, this was not, so I, I did a deeper dive into that. And kind of showed that. And it was largely motivated by the idea that Harbaugh called out Ryan Day on a coach's conference call because Al Washington was seen coaching. uh, Al Washington used to coach at Michigan, too. uh, Al Washington was seen coaching during, like, the COVID-19 ramp-up period. But he was an actual coach, and they weren't supposed to be doing some on-field, I think, instruction at the time. And so he made a big deal and big fuss about it. But here he was, you know, using analysts to coach a position group, uh, which was, you know, a pretty uh, large step for for an analyst to even be doing that to be specifically assigned to like one specific position. Um, and so that was really the kind of the motivation behind, you know, pursuing that story. And, you know, again, it was a deep dive into this whole culture of using analysts I mean, it goes on in a lot of programs. They went on with a lot of programs. I mean, nobody was, uh, uh, you know, basically uh, abiding by that rule, to, you know, strictly. And But Michigan was kind of blatantly violating that by having a guy basically assigned to a position group to do it. <laughs> yeah, right. And again, I don't want to get lost in what about. It's very easy in college football to get lost in what about, right? Like, what about this? What about that? What about what they did? That's not what we're discussing, right? Like, we need to stay very focused. We're discussing this. We're discussing what the NCAA found in this situation, right? Now, when other situations arrive, let's discuss those. That's that's perfectly fine. But I just, there's, there's a pretty wide-held belief, or there has appeared to be a wide-held belief. Uh, from, I mean, whenever you support an institution or anyone or anything who you deem is getting attacked, you will be defensive. It's kind of human nature. There's been a lot of that from the fan base, from the greater Michigan circle at large. I just wanted to make it perfectly clear. These are NCAA investigations and findings. This is literally what happened. This is not, I mean, and if you, and if you just, just kind of pull the string a little bit, right? Originally it was nothing happened. I don't know what you're talking about. Then it was, it's just a cheeseburger. Then it was, well, everybody does it, right? As the story changes, one side story has continued to change. And the others has been like, no, this is kind of what happened. And now and now we have these findings. Again, this does not mean Michigan deserves the death penalty. It does not mean they're the dirtiest program in America. It doesn't even mean they're the dirtiest program in the Big Ten. It means they broke some rules and they and they need to be held accountable for it. As I hope anybody would want for any football program that was, or entity, what have you. I mean, the world is not fair, but can't we strive to make it as close to fair as we can, right? Like, that's just kind of the best way to do things. That's the way I've been raised. You don't lie, you don't cheat, you don't break rules. I mean, I know Jim Harbaugh said that as well. I was actually raised that way. And and so you just just wonder, there's no... Sometimes you got to just take it on the chin and 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 move on. And this is not us saying Michigan is guilty, right? This, I mean, it's forty-eight pages, right? And it's just you know, again, it's I I think it's a real black eye for for Michigan, and it's going to again uh, irreparably harm their image, in my opinion. You know, going going forward, I don't think anybody is going to look at them the same way like the way that they used to. Uh, outside of maybe the most you know, again, homerish. Uh, Michigan fans wearing rose-colored glasses. I think you know. Again, outside of that, those that segment of 
you know, the population, I think uh, in general, most people are going to look at Michigan much differently now because of this. And I think, that, again, that's the great shame of this. I was just going to say that word. Fortunate, the person who, you know, probably is largely responsible for it is one of the people that is like the leading figures or icons in in uh, University of Michigan history, which is Jim Harbaugh. No, it's true. And I mean, I mean, just to to expand on that, what the, the play? I mean, the players are 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 de- are dealing with this and have to deal with this every day, right? The, especially the one. I mean, how many of these players were around before the twenty twenty one season? Right. I mean, this whole best class right now is juniors. They weren't even there. I mean, I, it's less than half, probably less than a third. Um, so people who aren't who weren't even on campus. Uh, I mean, with coaches who are no longer around, right? Jim Harbaugh, gone. Denard, gone. Partridge, gone. Uh, and, and, and Partridge and Denard were, were gone because they were fired for one for, uh, I mean, Partridge, what Michigan let him go because he did not follow their rules, which really was just the rule of not speaking to someone and directing them about an investigation. And then Denard was gone for, um, allegedly driving under the influence. Uh, now, I guess that's neither here nor there other than just sort of the sense of misdeeds or or, or different things. And I guess to, to, to bring the point back, it's just a shit. You, I mean, you, you said it right uh, for the player. I mean, Colston, I mean, Colston Loveland is not out there with binoculars stealing signs, right? Um, a lot of the, a lot of these players, Mason Graham, I just had, a great, a great chat with, uh, with, with his parents, um, the other, the other day. And they're talking about his recruiting process and, and why he chose Michigan. Right. I assure you, he was not looking to cut corners. He was not, lo- uh, he was not looking for the bag. He was not, it, none of that. Right. He was looking for a good program to go play ball and win. And now they've had to deal with this every single day for two, three years. It's just, and, and selfishly, I'm annoyed as hell. I don't know if I'm, if I'm allowed to be, but it's just like, this is not the job we signed up for. You know, it's just, we were, I, we were here to talk about football, basketball, the good things, the positive stories, the Davis Warren going to Mott Children's Hospital and meeting with kids who had the same cancer that he did. Uh, Michael Barrett coming back for a sixth year, switching positions, finding himself, developing as a human. Now he's in the NFL. This is why we're here. I mean, I, I was I was with Matt Aldred, the the Michigan basketball strength and conditioning coach, uh, just in the player development center, working out with him, watching him lead the players through yoga, through stretches, the way they listen to him, right? Just all the things that sports can do and bring. And this is none of that. And so it's just it's it's a shame. It's annoying. It's frustrating. I don't know who wins because and like someone might say this will be my last thought. I hope <laughs> uh, that Ohio State fans might win or Michigan State fans might win. The national championship's not coming down. Michigan won the national championship, and that's the way it is. And so, and I'm not saying it should, but I'm saying the the rival fan bases aren't going to get what they want. The Michigan players aren't going to get what they want. Michigan fans are just living into now. Nobody wins in the in this scenario. It, it, it is my takeaway. I, it's certainly a bummer. Yeah, I mean, you you, you don't want it. Like, if it's a lose 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 situation, that's unfortunate. Yeah, but I kind of reject the idea that it's like this crazy like unheard of thing for for the players to get slapped on the wrist for other things that have happened outside their control because that's unfortunately the way it happens in team sports all the time like when the Patriots lost a first round pick and Tom Brady had less of a chance at at winning the Super Bowl because of something that he probably spygate he probably wasn't orchestrating that but he ends up getting one less chance to get a Super Bowl you know you can look at all the teams like teams will in the NBA will sometimes lose uh, draft picks because of tampering like the players are actually legally allowed to tamper. Like if Jimmy Butler's on the heat, he can call, you know, uh, another player on another team and, and, and legally talk to them. However, his team got punished for tampering, even though by the rule book, he did nothing wrong. You know what I mean? So in team sports, this does happen sometimes where if you play for a team and you had nothing to do with it, it does adversely affect you, even though that you may not have made done anything wrong. And, the consequence is like the, the the consolation prize. Michigan won the national championship, so anyone who was on the team last year, you know, which is still a pretty much a big core of this group, you know, a few transfers here and there, they got 
they got to, they had to go through the, the crap of all this, but they also got to win the national championship. So, you know, I think a lot of people on the outside probably would not feel that bad for them. I'm not trying to make Michigan out to be a victim, uh, certainly, but I'm also not. I also want to acknowledge that there are victims within the Michigan circle in this situation. Lowercase v, right? Not a not a big v. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I mean, obviously, I'm probably bored with Andrew in, in this. Uh, not saying that you know your report's not about Tony, but I mean, like in general, I mean, this is you know again uh, brought on by you know themselves in a lot of ways. I mean, that this this happened. I mean, multiple things. I mean, and again, it seemed like at some point. In 2020, I mean, I don't know, again, what – you can't enter in the mind of Jim Harbaugh, but at some point it seemed like he just was like, we're going to win at all costs. I mean, that's what it felt – that's what it looks like from the outside. The perception is that he wanted to win at all costs. I mean, again, it's like we're going to beat Ohio State or die trying. We're going to win the Big Ten or die trying. And, you know, up until that point, they hadn't done any of that. And so – and then, uh, you know, again, Michigan – uh you know, has had all these things happen. Uh, they've also won a lot during this period. And so uh, a lot of people are, you know, trying to put two and two together. And, you know, maybe that's accurate and maybe that's uh, completely just, uh, you know, uh, guesswork uh, from our standpoint. But at the same token, it just looks, it looks fishy. It doesn't look good. And that's what it thing. And perception is reality. The perception of Michigan right now is a you know a program that just you know again at the NCA described is uh you know a pattern uh, a program that has shown a pattern of non-compliance uh basically it doesn't follow the rules and so uh that's that's troubling I think if you're if you're a Michigan uh fan or you're in a Michigan of the love because you're you know again a football program is not detached from the university it's part of the university and the university's reputation is also important in a lot of ways. I mean, these people, you know, again, uh, you know, paid a lot of money to go to this university. Uh, you know, they're paying upwards of probably close to 70,000 a year to go there. And so it's like, you know, do you want to be associated with something like this? I, I don't think you do, you know, in your heart of hearts. I mean, you know, I, you might feel good about the national championship, but this other stuff doesn't, doesn't do any good. No football is the front door. Uh, to the to the university, it is it is the face. So, yes, time will tell. Uh, Jim Harbaugh will, however, will not be in college football for the next four years. I probably would have made that bet anyway, but now it's uh, now it's for sure. Or he will have to show cause uh, in in order to to do so. Uh, Reiner, is there anything else we need to touch on? I feel we have gotten to the. I mean, both both fallouts. Um, I guess maybe what it means quickly, what it means for Michigan this year. <laughs> That's kind of an important, important piece uh, for, for those who are still with us. My understanding is nothing doesn't really mean anything uh, as in they won't be terribly affected. Is that, is that your read as well? That's what I was told. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't, I don't think it's going to necessarily have any kind of maybe direct impact. I think again, this could have a, long-term impact on, you know, who knows anything from recruiting to just, um, you know, how, how the program, you know, functions going forward. I mean, are they going to be extra cautious, you know, uh, as it pertains to following the rules? I mean, are they going to maybe hold themselves back from things that maybe they, you know, would have, would have done before just as a way to just, you know, absolutely make sure that they're, you know, not going to fall into this, uh, you know, trap again or something like that. And so, uh, I mean, how are they going to function? I mean, is, is uh, you know, uh, you know, it, again, I mean, it, are they going to be able to uh, uh, just even, you know, move on from it uh, with Sharon Moore as the head coach? Because, again, he he was a part of Jim Harbaugh's staff and he's been uh, uh, received some kind of, uh, you know, violation or uh, – potential violation in each of these investigations. So, I mean, it, it's a hard thing to to quite grasp at the moment as far as what, what it can mean this season or even just down the line. But I think, you know, over time, it, it will have somewhat of a cumulative effect. Yep. My final thought will be uh, after 
speaking with people in and around the athletic department, just sort of the reminder was, I mean, yes, Ward Manuel did suspend Jim Harbaugh for three games, but that was not until they had tried to get a negotiated resolution, right? And, and, and go through the whole gamut. So as it pertains to the newest draft notice of allegations, the one for the sign stealing, I would not expect any ramifications uh, for that towards Sharon, towards Michigan this year. Um, unless the unless the process is just expedited, right? Unless it gets back and forth much quicker, and they go through sort of the whole gamut. But um, my understanding, what I was told, is Ward Manual will not uh, he will not be handing out. I mean, punishments ahead of time, right? He will be he will be seeing seeing all the all the situations through. Anything else, fellas? No. All right. Class dismissed. Well done. Um, okay, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. Not our, not the most joyful of, of episodes, but uh, it, it must be done. Uh, things we got to talk about, and that's what's that's what's going on right now. So uh, this we'll get this up today, Wednesday. Um, yesterday, Tuesday, very quickly was the first full day of pads for Michigan. Uh, that was said to have gone well. Uh, Alex Orgy is still running. Davis Warren is still throwing. Uh, there was no Im- implication about a front runner for the quarterback job. I'm just hitting a few quick football notes <laughs> before we before we go out. Uh, ben Hall, it fully in the mix at RB3. I know these are a lot of random thoughts, but I had them as side notes that we were maybe going to discuss if we weren't talking about all the NCAA investigations. All right, that's enough. Thanks again for our editor in chief, Nicole Avery Nichols, for our audio engineer, Robin Chan. Andrew, for Reiner, I'm Tony. Thanks again. We will catch you next time on Hell Yes.